Hey guys, my name is Dice Rowland. Today we're going to be taking a look at a movie that made everybody afraid of chainsaws and Texas. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was written by the late Toby Hooper and Kim Henkel. It was directed by Hooper and was released on October 11th, 1974. A group of young adults traveling to visit the grave of their friend's grandfather find themselves in the clutches of a cannibalistic backwoods family. So without further ado, this is my review of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> The movie begins with a bit of a vague summary on the events that shall transpire by John Lyriquette. Then we're shown what should essentially be enough to make any unsuspecting vegetarian and otherwise squeamish individual exit the premises. A radio news reporter, played by the late John Henry Falk, mentions a recent discovery of grave robbing in the local cemetery, indicating that either complete corpses or only parts were taken by whoever had done this. We're then introduced to the main group of characters, Sally, played by the late Marilyn Burns, her brother Franklin, played by the late Paul A. Partain, Jerry, played by Alan Danziger, Kirk, played by William Vale, and Pam, played by Terry McMinn. They're traveling to Texas, and obviously it's going rather well. This heat is just driving me crazy. I don't know Listen, if I can take much more. Can... After a quick stop at the cemetery to check on Granddad, they head off. On their way, they come across a hitchhiker, played by Edwin Neal, and decide to pick him up. Franklin refers to this guy as Dracula, but I'm picking up on more Igor vibes. I would like to point out that if I were involved in this situation, this man wouldn't have even been picked up. But if by some misfortune he had, the first few sentences out of his mouth and I would have booted him. Peace, love, and get the fuck out. Going by what this hitchhiker talks about what goes on in slaughterhouses, and what goes into making head cheese, it made me momentarily consider a lactose-free and vegetarian diet. Shock and horror, this guy is 100% unhinged, and ends up scaring the shit out of the group and slicing up Franklin's arm. They finally kick the dude out and head to the nearest gas station. Unfortunately, the owner of the gas station, played by the late Jim Sitto, tells them that there is no gas to be had here, but they do have barbecue. So they head off to Sally and Franklin's grandfather's old house. Upon arrival, they do a little exploring. Kirk and Pam end up going off on their own to find the watering hole. Franklin mentioned. Instead, they discover that some neighbors may just have some gas that they could borrow. Here they discover quite a few cars hidden on the property. Let's see. Grave robbings, a crazy hitchhiker, no gas, middle of nowhere rural area, and seemingly abandoned cars. Listen, I know they're young and white, but do they have to be that white? Cementing their level of fucked, Kirk and Pam go up to the neighbor's house, and Kirk lets himself in. But they don't appreciate unexpected guests here. Of course, Pam goes in after Kirk, unaware of his fate. I must say, the decorating motif of this place really sets some standards. Speaking of, if you ever visit a southern state, and someone mentions that they got an idea for their house from this movie, RUN! Obviously, Leatherface, played by the late Gunnar Hansen, catches Pam too, and... <coughs> <laughs> if this business of meat and chainsawing people didn't work out, maybe Leatherface could have become a chiropractor. Now, of course, Sally, Franklin, and Jerry don't know what has become of their friends. So, Jerry goes off to find them before it gets dark. He comes across the same house Kirk and Pam had, and goes inside thinking he hears Pam. Technically, he does. I suppose. And you can guess what happens. With all three of their friends unaccounted for, Sally and Franklin fight for a moment before going off to look for them. It doesn't take very long for Leatherface to find them since they were yelling the whole way. Say goodbye to Franklin, everybody. And now, Sally is the only one left. So, she runs in the opposite direction of the chainsaw-wielding madman. Unfortunately for her, she runs right into the same house that Leatherface resides in, and ends up resorting to jumping out the second-story window to try to escape. To Sally Sally's credit, even after that not-so-graceful landing, she still manages to reach the gas station from earlier. The owner, who is still there, reassures Sally that while there's no phone there, they can drive to the nearest town for help. Just one problem. Now, now you just cooperate, young lady, and we'll have no trouble. <laughs> Of the many weapons used to torment and physically harm someone in a horror movie, a broom wasn't even on my list. And with the revelation that the gas station owner is in on this bizarre operation too, I have learned to trust no one in Backwoods, Texas. He drives her back to the house where the hitchhiker, Leatherface, and Grandpa, played by John Dugan, are waiting. What follows is an excellent portrayal of what it's like when I'm forced to join the family reunion dinner. <coughs> 
While Sally begs for her life, there's a bit of squabbling between the old man and the hitchhiker. But this doesn't exactly help her. As a matter of fact, they decide to let Grandpa take a hammer to her head. Now depending on how you look at this, since Grandpa is old as fucking dirt, the old one hit and lights out claim doesn't stand. So when the hitchhiker makes an attempt to kill Sally, she makes a break for it. That's the second window they'll have to replace, plus a door. With the hitchhiker and Leatherface taunting her the whole way, Sally makes it to the road, where a semi runs the hitchhiker over. But Leatherface then goes after the both of them, until a different driver happens upon the scene. Sally finds refuge by climbing into the back of the pickup truck, and the driver hauling ass out of there. So with Sally practically yo-yoing between crying and laughing, and Leatherface doing some very dangerous ballet, the credits roll. The story of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was inspired in part by Ed Gein, so that makes this movie yet another on the list of horror movies that were inspired by real-life serial killers. Of course, some others would be Psycho, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, and Silence of the Lambs. It also presents the notion that real-life events of tragedy and fear can be even more horrific than whatever you see on a big screen, which I agree with. This movie is kind of similar to The Blair Witch Project, in that the advertising for it made it seem like the events shown were true. The first time watching this film, I didn't think too much of the acting. However, watching it again, I have to say that the actors did a pretty pretty good job for a low-budget 70s movie. The characters that they're portraying aren't shallow, but they're not terribly deep either. That's what's good about it. They're just a group of friends meaning to represent people you may know in your own life. Each of them in the group made their characters unique from each other, and stand out just a bit. I have no trouble differentiating between them because of their personalities and quirks. It feels like they really are simply a group of friends on a road trip. Yes, Franklin is annoying, but that's exactly what he was supposed to be. There's a lot in the plot that wouldn't have happened without his involvement. Edwin Neal, Gunnar Hansen, and Jim Siddow are suitably unsettling in their roles, also each very distinct. Though they make up this unhinged family, they're very different from each other, with the enjoyment of, if not the need to kill, being the thing that keeps them together. Once again, we have practical effects in use here, with the most interesting being the late Robert A. Burns' work on the corpses, skeletal remains, and such. The blood is passable if not obviously fake, but W.E. Burns created an impressive look for Grandpa that was rather convincing. Leatherface is equally as convincing with his masks. What's meant to come across as disgusting is genuinely nauseating. The settings are genuine, so they come across as such, and the sweltering heat, though real, is still felt through the screen. The atmosphere is unique with a style all its own, particularly when we get to the cannibalistic family's neighborhood. I can't come across an old gas station out in the middle of nowhere without thinking of TCM. The score done by Toby Hooper and Wayne Bell is jarring, but not necessarily in a bad way. It does what I certainly assume it was meant to do, which is make the audience ill at ease. It's almost comparable at times to the sensation of nails on a chalkboard. Your heckles immediately raise and you're just waiting for something bad to happen. The concept of the scoring that we hear is meant to emulate what an animal would hear in a slaughterhouse. With all that being said, I'm giving the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 6.5 out of 10 bloody thumbs up. At first watch, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre may seem like a pretty simple horror movie, where a bunch of youths get killed horrifically. And that's exactly what it is. But it's also a social commentary of the times, detailing what repercussions could come from the replacement of human beings in certain jobs, as well as how desensitized we've become to terrible things that actually happen in our everyday lives. What's interesting about its legacy is that it's often been labeled as one of the goriest, most violent horror movies. However, that's not correct at all. As a matter of fact, we hardly see much blood, and there isn't really any gore either. The corpse isn't such a gruesome, but not loaded with guts. So that's a credit to Hooper's storytelling, to inspire viewers' minds to fill in what was simply implied, and make themselves believe that they just witnessed something so horrendous. While this movie isn't quite in my wheelhouse, I still appreciate it, and find it to be an important part of horror history for multiple reasons. I find it to be more unsettling than scary, and that's alright. It's a piece of raw horror that doesn't bother with trying to be cinematic, and instead goes straight for the viewer's nerves. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like to let me know. Don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me what you think of this movie. And if you have any suggestions for horror movies you would like to see me review in the future. You can support the channel through my Patreon where you would get exclusive and early access to videos like this. And don't forget to share this video to help the channel grow and subscribe for more videos like this. See you later. That's the last goddamn hitchhiker I ever...